Hey, welcome back. I'm Amanda Song and this is K-Drama Couple. How are you doing today? It's a rainy day here where I live, but I hope you're getting a lot of sunshine and I hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to review Mr. Queen. This is like the Mr. Queen halftime report. <laughs> Before we get into this review, um, I just have to mention that lately YouTube has been more strict with copyrighted content. So for the time being, we can't really upload any more direct reactions simply because they keep getting blocked. So I'm going to try a new style and so we're going to be reviewing Mr. Queen and we are still going to show a few clips as much as I can get away with, fingers crossed, uh, but it won't be like as much as the reaction video so hopefully this video won't get blocked. Um, thank you for understanding that. It's not that we don't want to upload it, it's that it literally gets blocked so that you won't be able to see it whether it's uploaded or not. Instead, you can find some more of our reactions um, on Instagram. All right, let's get into Mr. Queen, the first 10 episodes. So Mr. Queen is a K-drama with 20 episodes. It begins in modern times, but most of the drama takes place in the Joseon era. And I love shows that are both historical and have more than 16 episodes <laughs> because I'm a K-drama binge watcher. So I love my shows to have extra episodes. Mr. Queen is about a chef who works at the Blue House serving <laughs> Korea's most elite government officials and even like diplomats from other countries. But because of his like free spirit and um, kind of selfish pride, he gets into a little bit of trouble and while running away from the police, he falls into a pool, smacks his head on the bottom and almost dies. While he's kind of drowning slash dying, um, the spirit of a woman swims through the water and kisses him and they swap bodies. <laughs> So Bong Hwan wakes up in the body of Kim So Young, who is about to be the queen of Joseon. It's the day before her wedding day, and that's where this drama really starts to take off. So for the, for a while, Bong Hwan tries to get back to his original life. He thinks there's a connection between the water and transferring bodies, so he keeps trying to find water. But it turns out that Kim So Young, the body that he has inhabited, fell into the lake when the body transfer occurred. So because of that, the palace had the entire, all the lakes drained of water so that she can't jump in again. Um, and in the meantime, they suspect it's someone pushed her in the lake, so there's an investigation going on. From the start, we get the idea that Kim So Young and the king, King Chol Jung, don't really get along that well. It seems like they're both very suspicious of each other. Naturally, because Kim So Young is being inhabited by Bong Hwan, he's like, stay away from me, like I'm not interested in you. And that makes it really hilarious. That adds like a lot of conflict and funny moments. But there's something darker going on because we don't know why the king is suspicious of her. We don't know why. But at the end of episode two, we find out that he's even plotting to kill the queen. Okay, I have a question. At what point did you start to realize that the king might actually develop romantic feelings for the queen. For me, I really thought like it might just not happen at all. I thought like, oh, maybe this is gonna be one of those shows where they go from enemies to friends. But now that I'm halfway through, it's definitely becoming enemies to lovers. And this is a really like hot trope at the moment. It's really popular in novels like fiction. And I'm so excited to see it in a K-drama because one of the things that's like really predictable about K-dramas is like if you watch enough K-dramas, you already know the two lead actors like are gonna fall for each other if it's a romantic K-drama. And this one threw a little like wrench in that plan. They made it just a little bit harder for you to guess by having them start off not just not liking each other, but like as actual enemies. Like the king tried to kill the queen because in the past he thinks that she got him almost killed. Whew, so yeah, that's and like so then when they finally have their first kiss at like episode seven or eight um, It's like whoa like huge tension release. It's really Tantalizing trope. It's like painful, but also like ooh yes. I love it So that's a little bit of the plot so far So for the first half of the show the plot is Kim So Young figuring out a way to, to refill the lake so that she can jump in and get back to her previous life. And while doing that, she ends up getting to know the king more and the people at the palace a lot more and inadvertently helping them out, which sometimes helps her out too and sometimes gets her into big trouble. Um, as for the characters, um, it's a really great cast and it's really refreshing to see some new faces that you wouldn't normally see, um, not just actors themselves, but like in these period palace dramas, 
like you usually do have like the court of scholars, Kim Jua Gun, like the dark guy who wears like the big powerful hat. Been there, done that. But it's nice to see the queen dowager and the grand queen dowager and the queen, like three generations of queens together and like seeing how they interact and the reasons why they help each other or try to get in each other's way. As for Mr. Queen, like I think he started off a little bit like proud and he likes to have fun, I think. He definitely likes his women and someone who I think, yeah, just likes to have fun. I do think he started off kind of selfish and I think that's one of the things that his character arc is about. He has to learn to use his great like strengths and charisma to help other people, not just himself. But we do see one moment early on where he does something completely selfless and that's when when he's in the kitchen harassing the other chef. So like um, a little orphan girl comes in and her father kind of ran away because he couldn't afford to pay the heavy taxes. And we see Kim So Young being really kind to her and even like motherly. And I think that's very, that's like when we all, all of our hearts kind of melted towards him. Like, okay, no matter what he's going through, like he's a really good person deep inside. I think his character arc will be more about like learning his role in the larger scheme of things and learning to put other people before himself. As for Shin Hye Sun, who actually plays the character of the queen, her facial expressions are so on point. Like when she does this thing where she like curves her lips to one side, like mm -hmm, little smirk like this. That is a look I have seen dozens of K-drama male leads or K-drama male actors making, maybe without even knowing it, or maybe it's like what they're trained to do in like K-drama acting school. Um, the way she sits with her legs wide open, <laughs> I think it's definitely more like masculine and just in general like how she arrives in Joseon era yeah it makes her like so believable as being like a character who's also a man it's really great like really great acting for the king himself King Jung, we see right off the bat that he's kind of a puppet in the hands of the Grand Queen Dowager and Kim Jua Gun so there's the two clans like the Andong Kim clan and the Cho clan and they're kind of like battling for power over e each other and we see the king being stuck in the middle of this and for the first seven eight episodes it's very very vague about how he became the king and like what his past is they do drop some shady hints here here and there all we know is that his entire family was killed and he owes some debt to the grand queen dowager even if that debt is merely just his life because of the king and the queen having like such different personalities reasons that are revealed very slowly he doesn't trust her because he believes she's involved in something that happened to him in the past and so for the first like four episodes he like wants to kill her and then we kind of see like a breakthrough where he realizes oh like i'm just taking out my anger on her because she's a weak target like an easy target then by episode 10 this is the midpoint now it's kind of when like they have to start changing we finally start to see the king reliving his fears and those dark memories and we see him even finding comfort in his queen <laughs> kim so young so their love relationship grows very very slowly and i don't know if anyone else caught this um i so i used to be a fan of bap it's a band a k-pop group that's now disbanded the kim hwan the kind of like flowery boy who floats around just looking for someone to talk to <laughs> that's yu young jae one of the singers from bap and i just wanted to throw that out there in case anyone else remembers bap and that's another thing that's great about this show is that they give side characters their own unique little lives and stories um another character who we have to talk about is cho ha jin so for the first like five episodes or so, I didn't really know what to think about her. She's kind of a gray character. I definitely didn't really fall for her like sweet act. Um, and it is a little bit cliche to, to make her like the other woman. Um, but I think what they did well with this show is that it actually starts off with Cho Hwa Jin and Cho Jung, the king, in love with each other. And they are trying to protect each other against the queen. Um, but that all changes when she sits down and basically like sacrifices herself saying, oh, I jumped in the lake and she protects those two. So right now at the half point, what we know is that she's been lying to the king about her identity in the past. So I think in the past she pretended to be the one who saved him from the well. But in truth, Kim So Young saved him from the well and then just ran away. And So Ha Jin just happened to be there when he came out of the well. So he assumed it was her. 
and she's been taking credit for that. But now we can see like the cracks in their relationship and they're starting to fall apart because the king's also starting to fall in love with his queen. And it's the same for her mirror character, which is like the cousin who's in love with the queen. Like, you do you, bro, but like, I can't cheer for you. <laughs> Even if you weren't her cousin, I still probably wouldn't cheer for you. Um, so yeah, let's talk about some of the tropes. So this show uses one of my favorite tropes in dramas, which is using words that have not actually been invented or introduced yet into the Korean language. Fung Hwan comes from the future, where Korean language includes a lot of English language words. But in Tolson, they don't know English yet. <laughs> and even if they did, there's still some English words that just wouldn't have existed back then. <laughs> so like, for instance, no touchy. <laughs> That's like just English, like no touching, but the king has no idea what that means. And so like at first he's just confused. Hmm, what does that mean? But then like later on you see him like writing it down, like trying to figure out like the Chinese characters that the word originates from. But back then like many Korean words originated from Chinese characters. So it like it just gets crazier and crazier. And then that gets carried into um, like episode six when he saves her from the lake and she like yells at him because she's like I said no touching but because she lied about what it meant in the past now he's confused it's just it makes it really really interesting and some of the other ones are like anti pen pen club and I just really really love this little trope yeah and like so the body swap is also another thing that happens way more often in k-dramas um so it's not like the body swap itself is new but I think what makes it really interesting in Mr. Queen is the fact that it's a man who lands in a woman's body, someone from the past, and that like it just opens up like all these new possibilities. Like even though he's in her body, like he's still a man's spirit. So I kind of knew he wasn't gonna like fall in love with the king right off the bat. But what I didn't expect was like the little things he'd have to learn about, such as when she gets her period, he's like, what the hell is happening? Like, ah, oh, so painful. Um, I kind of actually I kind of wish they would have like shown more about that like just a little bit more of like how he deals with it but anyway that was like really like whoa I did not expect that and the fact that even halfway through now at episode 10 he's still like fantasizing about like women and I think that just makes it so unique and like refreshing I really like that aspect ah OST we have to talk about the OST the background music like the more instrumental background music there's some of them that are like really like tense and great for like those tense fighting moments. Um, in this drama, I really prefer the actual like OSTs with the words and everything. So the first one I love is when he's starting to, when the queen first starts to cook in the kitchen, there's like this really energetic, like fun um, OST. I don't know what the lyrics mean. I, I haven't like looked it up yet, but um, it's like really just full of energy and it's in like a man's voice. I feel like it just like, underlines the whole emotions of the show really like perfectly. In episode four or five there's like a moment when three of the side characters they're kind of like all hanging around and a, a little OST starts to play. Cherry blossoms are falling around her and the OST is just so perfect. Actually that song is very sad song. Oh. It feels like I got shot in my oh. heart because we broke up. But the section that they use is like um, it feels like I got shot in the heart because we broke up, but they're using it in a way that like it just feels so like sweet and lovely and like funny. Let's talk a little bit about the themes. So I think the main themes in the show are power and loneliness, but I think also sex is a theme. I may be wrong about this, but it's it's like hinted at in almost every episode in like various different ways. Even like um, Madame Che is like spinning this little kaleidoscope like watching essentially like Tolson era porn. I think like on a deeper level what this show is doing is I feel like it's kind of like forcing the past and the present to meet and say like why do we have all these different rules and stuff like why do we do things in a certain way like why can't we just be ourselves? Oh, okay my train of thought kind of disappeared. Oh yeah and part of like sex as a theme what goes along with that is like gender roles and like actual like sexual identity from the moment Bong Hwan arrives in the queen's body, he's kind of like overturning all of these gender norms. Like she's expected to carry herself in a certain way and like according to Tolson era, but like he's just like, nope, I'm doing it my way. Like this is only temporary. It's interesting to see because you don't really realize how many things like changed between now and then until you see them like 
back to back, like facing each other. At the end of the day, I think the queen is trying to just get people to like understand each other better and like who's trapped in her body, like obviously he has nowhere to go so like he has to try to understand her perspective and like her motives. Um, so it's kind of like a metaphor I guess for like one gender trying to understand another gender. Just one last thing I'd like to mention is like the little feel good scenes that this show has. I think because loneliness is mentioned like several times, especially by Kim Hwan, I almost felt like it was a little bit of like a consolation. Like I know the whole world is kind of stuck at home right now because of the pandemic. And like, even if you do go out, you can't really see people like you used to. So I think they, they wanted to like comfort us a little bit. And I definitely did feel comforted, like some solidarity with scenes like the Hua Che scene when Queen serves them refreshing Hua Che. That was like so heartwarming, like she didn't have to do that. Like little moments like that just made this show so much more deep, so much deeper, like 3D. <laughs> so now we're at the halfway point and these romantic tensions between the king and the queen are starting to surface. She literally just was having a like sexy like bath dream about the king. <laughs> so only good things will come for their relationship. But as for all this palace politics, I think it's only gonna get worse. But I wanted to share this with you now, even though I'm not fully finished, um, because if you loved this show, you're probably still thinking about it. And I just wanted to give you some fresh boost of Mr. Queen content. <laughs> I hope you like this new review style. Take care of yourselves. Don't be lonely. Call a friend, call your family, or just chat us up in the comments. <laughs> okay, we'll see you next time. Bye.